Right, so what I've got here actually is a bioplastic resin. It's actually based on seaweed. If you want to know how I made that, just check out the video on um, seaweed bioplastics and basics. It's done exactly the same. There are a couple of changes. In the ratio here, I use 25 grams of seaweed and 50 grams of cornstarch to one litre of water. The rest is in the pan, incidentally. And I also soaked the seaweed for 24 hours. So I put it in some water and left it for 24 hours before I actually made it. And then I made it in the same way as the earlier video. And that gave me quite a liquid resin. And because I want a liquid resin because I'm thinking about composites. Now I have a whole load of this stuff. This is hemp fiber mat. It's a 100% hemp, golden, uh, unretted, non-woven, 800 GSM, 5mm thick hemp mat. Sent to me by Echo Composites. A friend of mine at Echo Composites sent it through. Now you could do this with just hemp and make your own mat, and, and that's entirely something to do. I just happen to have a friend who sent me this, so I have my mat ready. Now, it is something you could do with all kinds of organic materials. So, in the previous video, people were saying, could this be done with grass? Well, you can do this bit with grass, for sure, and that would be really interesting. Maybe grass, or, or leaves, or straw, or wood chips, or um, sand dust, it's a whole load of things you could try this with. But I'm going to use this hemp mat. Now the hemp mat obviously is really quite dry and I'm going to put a liquid onto it so a lot of that water is going to be sucked in and I want that resin to impregnate the entire mat before it begins to dry. So if you do check out that earlier video you'll see it was quite a gelatinous mass there was no way I was getting it into here. Now I've got it nice and liquid it'll actually impregnate into the mat or if you're mixing in sawdust or something like that it won't get dry immediately and you'll be able to actually add the thing in and then leave it to dry. So I'm going to impregnate it here by basically pouring it on, smearing it out and then running a roller over it. And you can see that it's been sucked in immediately. And if we have a look at the other side, what we're looking for it to do is go right through to the other side. So I'm just going to do that for a while and get that into that mat. So when you've done that, what you end up with is a sheet of this, which is basically hemp and seaweed, obviously. Now, you've got a couple of options with it, actually, because what we need to do now is dry it. And um, you can either just leave it to dry naturally, in which case it's got a lot of water, so it'll take a while. Or you can pop it in an oven at 150 degrees centigrade or 200 degrees centigrade, somewhere between those two. If you do it at 150, you don't need to really worry about it. Just come back when you think it's had enough. If you do it at 200, keep an eye on it. Make sure that you're not burning it. Now, I'm going to use this kiln. This is the one that we actually made in previous videos. So if you follow those videos and made this kiln, you're all ready to go. In order to get it into that kiln, I've actually cut it into squares that'll fit. So I'm going to put that in now, 200 degrees centigrade, and we'll pop it out a little bit and see what we've got. Okay, so after you've done that for a bit, what you get is this. So this has had about 20 minutes at 200 degrees centigrade. And what we've got here is a hard plastic panel made out of seaweed and hemp. And if you think about it, that's actually really awesome. I mean, I rushed this a little bit, I think, which is why it's a little bit wobbly. So clearly I've got some more work to do on it to get that actually to be a flat panel. But if we can make a flat panel like that, then we can make anything. Now, a lot of people think about plastic as being something you can injection mold. And sure, there's a whole lot of plastics where that's really useful. But so are flat panels. When you think about 8x4 and you think about plywood and how much stuff is made out of flat panels, we could make an awful lot of stuff out of this plastic. And that's actually really, really exciting. Now, when we're making that liquid and we make the resin and we paint it on and then we cook it in an oven, it's not a particularly good method for industrialization. But that's actually a really good thing. Because what it means is that there's a space here for artisanal craftsmanship. Get these flat panels, make them into stuff, and really, you've got yourself a prime product. This is the kind of thing that people will pay money for. It's the kind of thing that everybody wants. We're trying to ditch plastics. We've got here a material we could make a hundred things out of. Chairs, tables, boxes, lampshades, all that tut we have lying around that's made of plastic. I mean, this thing, it's a plastic case. It's going to do nothing. We could make this case out of this material as easily. 
But even we can't make it into the mould like that because you can't afford the mould. You could certainly afford to go down to the beach and pick up some seaweed. You could certainly afford to go out and pick some grass. And you could actually make flat panels all by yourself, make things out of them and sell those things on eBay or Amazon as bioplastics. The bioplastics are biodegradable and there's a ton of stuff you could make from it just by making flat panels. Now I'm going to do some other stuff on composites like this and I'm going to work on that to get that to be an absolutely flat panel so we can make stuff out of it. But it's clear that we're on a long way there to making a hemp and seaweed plastic that we can make stuff out of and that stuff can be made at the artisanal level and sold as a premium product. I think that's really cool when you start to think of it like that. I think there's more work to do on that to get it into an industrial process than there is to get it into an artisanal process. Anyway, I thought I would share that with you where we are at the moment. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it sparks ideas in you. And thank you very much for watching.